Okay, welcome to a lesson. Uh, we're going to be looking at economic and social indicators. Basically, an indicator points out or highlights something. Okay, so economic indicators. Economic indicators measure aspects of the economy, the performance of the economy. So basically, an indicator is something that measures aspects or, or how the economy is performing at a specific time. Okay, so they serve as data to analyze current conditions. Okay, we'll look at a bit more at what this means. Production indicators. So first of all, we know that gross domestic product is basically the total value of all goods and services produced in a boundaries geographic over given period of time. It's basically calculated in three methods. We know there's a value added, production method, the income, that the factor of production received, that's the income method, and then the last method is the expenditure method, which is basically spending on goods and services. So the production indicators, okay, we first looked at what GDP was, and then we looked at the three methods that GDP is calculated, the production method, the income method, and the expenditure method. So if we look more at GDP, there's real GDP, and there's obviously GDP at current prices. So basically looking at the first point there, to measure growth performance, we use real GDP. So how are we actually going? We want to know by our real GDP. Nominal or current is not really reliable, okay? Because real GDP removes the effect of inflation, whereas nominal doesn't. Okay, so that's why we use real GDP. But there's three important purposes for per capita GDP, basically. Uh, GDP per capita is basically GDP per head or per person. So the first one is that it indicates economic development. Okay. Second one, it looks at or indicates living standards. And the third one, it compares living standards. So if you think about all these three important purposes for per capita GDP, it makes sense because economic development has to do with the development of the overall standard of living of people within a country. So those are the three main things. We look at the formula here at the bottom. Real GDP is divided by population number. And that's how we we'll get it. Okay, GGP, gross geographic product, uh, very new concept, but total value of all final goods and services produced within a specific geographic area, e.g. a province. So, KZN, what do we usually produce a lot in KZN? Um, I don't know, let's say shoes. Um, if we had a mass production of shoes in, K in KZN, whereas we don't in other provinces, then the gross geographic product for KZN with regards to shoes would be very, very high. Indicators related to employment. So first of all, there's something called an EAP, which is the economically active population. This is people between the ages of 15 and 65 years of age and are willing to work. The employment rate percentage of economically active people, workers. So employment to population ratio is the absorption ratio. Basically, it's the number of employed people divided by the total population. Okay, then we look at unemployment rates. Those within the economically active population are willing and able to work but cannot find a job. So that's how we term that unemployment rates. Definition of unemployment, including expanded definition. So the expanded definition is even those people that have been disgruntled to actually find the job. And like if you look at the certain unemployment rate, we're sitting at about 25 point something percent, and the extended rate is sitting more just about 40 percent. So those are the discouraged people. Okay, so here are some unemployment figures and facts from 2001, very outdated information. But just look at some of those figures there. 17 million were economically active in 2001, 13 million were employed, 4 million were unemployed. So officially unemployment rates are now 25.7% compared to 25% in quarter 1 in 2011. So it's increased slightly, but I mean we've still got roughly 4.5 or 5 million people that are unemployed. So price change indicators. Um, we look at inflation, the PPI, which is a production price index. Basically, inflation drawn out of price increases over a long period of time. So prices have to be generally increasing over a long period of time. PPI is the production price index. So basically, all the goods that are made locally 
when they leave the factory and the yard or, or the imports of goods when they come in, they are measured uh, and that's how we get the production price index. Uh, production prices increase, consumer prices increase. Consumer price index and CPI X. Okay, so CPI, it's urban and metros. Uh, basically, it's an index. It measures the basket of things that households pay for every month. It shows changes in purchasing power of the rand. The CPI X is, is basically the CPI excluding payments on home loans. Okay, because um, home loans can be affected by an, a slight interest rate change. As you can see there in brackets, it says interest rate changes affect cost of basket because payments on housing home loans will change. So a slight increase or decrease in interest rates will, will either put more money in your pocket or take away a lot of money in your pocket. So it's very hard to then include this into the consumer price index. That's why it's excluded and you get the CPIX. Foreign trade indicators, the bottom line is exports equal employment. The more we export to other countries, the more employment we possibly get here. But imports, on the other hand, also means that uh, we've got more consumer choice. You know, we import goods that we don't usually produce in our country. It gives our consumers a larger choice. The terms of trade, gentlemen, very important. It's the ratio of export and import prices. So terms get worse, more export needed to maintain import spending in the balance of payments. Okay. Exchange rates, basically they're telling us that it's not a good time to buy a suit. If the exchange rate increases too much, then things that we buy or import become too expensive for us. Okay, productivity indicators, the last indicators that we're going to look at. Uh, basically, productivity of labor or capital. Okay, labor, you work smarter, especially if you want more wages. Okay, so productivity is basically being able to produce more with the same amount of inputs that you originally had. Okay, so calculating labor productivity, it's real GDP, okay, divided by the number of workers employed. That's the average output per worker. That will tell us basically that each worker in South Africa produces this amount of outputs. Obviously, it's not a true reflection of how each worker produces because we don't all produce the same, but it is an average. So it's an average output per worker. Okay, so wages increase, productivity doesn't increase. That's a big no no. That results into inflation. Why? Because if the wages increase and productivity doesn't increase, the guys are getting paid more for doing the exact same thing or even less in certain instances. What does the factory owner do? What does the business owner do? They obviously put that price into the price of the product. Price of the product increases. Yeah, inflation. Remuneration per worker, real wages increase, then more than spending, employers. Okay. Monetary condition indicators. Lastly, we'll look at just the money supply. We've got your M1, which are basically your coins and your notes. You've got your M2, which is your coins and notes, plus short to medium term deposits. And then M3, which is basically your M2, plus long term deposits. Um, something interesting interest rates, uh, repo rates or repurchase rates of the Reserve Bank. This is the amount uh, they lend to the commercial banks. The benchmark is equal to the best borrowing rates. Interest rates increase, debt costs. Prime rates is the lowest rate, this is the best rate they give to a customer or to the